Entry mix exclusive. Hello all, it's JMix here with TupacNation.net and I am welcoming to the program Mr. Lloyd Lake, a partner and co-creator of the Untitled documentary focusing on the justice for Tupac and the death of the Notorious B.I.G. I humbly ask all my YouTube subs and viewers and all the forum members to click the link at the top of the video to support their Kickstarter campaign and to help to finally get out the truth on the deaths of Christopher Wallace and Tupac Shakur. I'd like to welcome Mr. Lloyd Lake to the program. Hey, how you guys doing out there? We appreciate you taking the time and doing the interview. Uh, no problem. Lloyd, it's been 18 years since the murder of Tupac Shakur. Why this documentary and why now? I mean, it's just so many facts out now and it's time that it, it comes out to light about the people that were involved and just them not being who they portray to be. We're referring to Suge Knight. People uh, look at him like he's some type of uh, mafia boss or some type of gangster. He's a fag. So it's time to put the spotlight on that. Tupac basically died from behind running around with this coward, you know, and a lot of facts came out, like I said, that, that support my claim that, that Suge Knight is working for the federal government. And nobody knows how long he's been working for him. And that's what this documentary we're going to touch on and try to figure out how long has this relationship with him and the government been going on. For those that don't know who Lloyd Lake is, can you describe your history with Suge Knight? Yeah, I first met Suge in 94, and I had a record label called Break Bread Records, and we used to do business with Suge Knight uh, and Death Row Records. We were on a couple of their projects, and that's how I met Suge, and we, we developed a close friendship. And You know, a lot of people don't know, if you don't know, I was involved in the Reggie Bush situation that I found out that Suge played both sides on that case and had Reggie run into the FBI making false extortion claims on me, trying to get me put in prison for things that I didn't have anything to do with. Just from his manufactured lies playing both sides of the fence, and you know, people tired of Suge playing both sides, so now we're going to expose him for what he is. Make a long story short, you know, he's been doing a lot of things to a lot of people, and I don't know if he's doing it at the government's discretion or who he's doing it for, but it's time to put a lot of facts out on the table. And this is what this documentary is going to do. It's going to be, it's just going to put facts out there and put everything on the table and people take it how they want and use it. And, you know, people use their own opinion at the end of it. After you get the facts, you use your own opinion. I don't know if people looked at the trailer, but if you if you watch the trailer, you'll see a lot of things in the trailer that's just not possible for a three striker. If you're familiar with California law and three strikes, you'll see that a three striker can't get away with the things that this guy gets away with. So it's just time to stop him from doing the things that he's doing. Bullying these artists, bullying these little guys. Nobody likes a bully, you know. And he's a coward, bullying on people that's two times smaller than him. So I'm just going to expose him for what he is, and that's what this documentary is going to do. Hopefully the artists stop being afraid of this guy and stand up to him and start hitting him in his mouth. <laughs> stop the bully. That's how you stop a bully. You had made a quote previously that the government was using this guy to create rap wars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I was, I was in the room with with Suge and Little Bootsy when Suge was trying to get Little Bootsy to diss T.I. and call him a rat. That's all the whole conversation was about. Is Bootsy should diss T.I. and call him a rat. You know, when T.I. got that gun case. And Suge just wanted to start this war with, with, with Bootsy and T.I. for no reason. And it's time to step up and start letting these artists know don't bite when this coward tries to get you guys involved in this stuff because it's not good for business, it's not good for the hip-hop community, it wasn't good for Tupac and Big, and it's not good now. Lloyd, what is your take on David Kenner? Do you view him as a nefarious individual? No, no. You, you know, if you watch Reggie, Reggie uh, Wright tell you in his in, uh, on the clip, David Kenner helped a lot, but, you know, at the end of the day, Suge was trying to set David Kenner up. But guess his attorney wouldn't let him. His attorney is a mob attorney, chasing off out of Vegas, and he, he's an old-school mob attorney. He told Reggie, like, tell Suge I respect him, but I don't represent rats. At the end of the day, Suge was trying to set David Kenner up at the end of the day. It's Suge going all for itself. I mean, what, what David Kenner is is an attorney, that a criminal defense attorney that helped Suge put together death row with the help of Harry O. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't know what, what part David Kenner played in anything other than helping to formulate death row. 
and helping them stay out of legal trouble. But at the end of the day, Suge was trying to cross him. At the end. Everybody he ever did business with, he tried to cross from the people that gave him the initial seed money. I mean, he's just not a good dude. Bottom line, he's not. He don't. He doesn't keep it one hundred on nothing he does, and I'm exposing him for that. I had noticed in a previous interview that you and Reggie had mentioned Greg Kading's book, Murder Rap. Is he involved with the project? No, he's not involved with it, but, you know, we go a lot based on his theories, gifts as far as supporting my claim as far as him being an informant. Because in Greg, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Greg Kading's book, but Greg Kading came to the conclusion from people that were involved and end up cooperating with the government that Puffy was behind Tupac and Shug was behind Biggie. But my point I'm trying to make, if you're, a mur if you're a suspect in a murder, you don't get away with all these crimes that Shug has been getting away with. If you're really a suspect in a murder, especially of one of the most iconic rappers it was, you don't just get to walk the streets. If the government wants you, they come get you. And they just don't give you those type of breaks that Shug Knight's been getting. And, I, you know, he's, like I said, he started the whole extortion case on me with the Reggie Bush, and not one time was his name mentioned in the grand jury. That's a smoking gun right there that he's cooperating with the government. Can't start an investigation. Reggie Bush ran to the feds and said I was trying to extort him because of a phone call that me and Suge made to him, which I didn't say anything on the phone call remotely, remotely involved with any type of extortion plot. But Reggie says just because me and Suge called him that he needed to go to the FBI because he was afraid that Suge was on the phone. But if that was the case, Suge name should have came up in the grand jury. And it never did. So that just shows you like how the government uses this guy. Lloyd, a lot of people are going to say that if Suge Knight was a snitch, then why was he sentenced to nine years in 1997? You got to understand, I think that was 96 when he went to prison, right after 90, beginning of 97. The state, the state case is different than the feds. The feds, if the state really want to punish you, the feds can't help you. You notice he didn't go do any time on any federal charges. He had a six-year federal racketeering case and he got a misdemeanor. That's not possible. I was up at death row. I know everybody at the row. And I know what was going on around there. And for Suge to get a misdemeanor, everybody would tell you that's ridiculous. I mean, from beating up people because they couldn't rap, uh, you know, uh, threatening people's lives and shit like that, you don't just get away with that during a federal uh, racketeering uh, uh, a RICO charge that they're trying to bring against. You don't end up with a, a misdemeanor. The feds don't investigate people to give out misdemeanors. He probably, he probably ran across a state judge that didn't care that he was working for the feds. There was a lot going on up there. A lot of stuff had broke. And to make a long story short, Suge didn't think he was going to get that, that nine-year prison sentence. So he probably would have cooperated in the open if he knew that he was going to get nine years. He was under the impression he was going to go home. So maybe he didn't cooperate with the state. You know, the state and feds are two different agencies. And if the state really want to press the issue, the feds can't get them out of a state charge. The state still has the right to prosecute. So to make a long story short, the, the state probably said, we're tired of your shit. He, he was a, a longo. They accused him of uh, bribing the DA. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Longo. That was the attorney, the DA, whose house Suge was living in. All that news broke right before his sentence, and I think the, the judge was just pissed with all the stuff that was coming out and decided, hey, I'm going to hammer this guy. And they gave him nine years. And a lot of stuff was going on in Compton at the time, a lot of shootings and stuff going on out there. So I think they did it uh, without without listening to what the feds were telling them to do, and I think they took it in their own hands. And who knows, he might not have been cooperating with the feds then. It's a lot of stuff we don't know. I know right now he's working for the FBI, no doubt about it. I don't know when he started, so maybe he wasn't working at that time. That's something that we plan to uncover is when this relationship with him and the government started. It, look, go to YouTube and put Suge Knight in Mexico, all, all you listeners out there. Now, these are two informants on there that Suge is very familiar, familiar with. They're called the Antar brothers, George and Sammy Antar. I had an altercation with, one of, with, with, with these guys, and Suge knew that they were trying to set me up for things, all kinds of different crimes. And Suge knows these guys are informants. So every time I would ask Suge, was he hanging out with these guys, he would lie about it. So... I, I, right there on tape, you see Suge in Mexico. He can't deny it. He's hanging around these notorious informants. What is a mob boss doing hanging around known rats? Well, you know, or a gangster for any kind and whatever. That's not something that you should be in association with. 
and should know that these guys are informants, you know, and like I said, everything I'm telling you, I told Shug to his face, and I embarrassed him in front of the whole club, and at the end of the day, I called him a rat, a bitch, a fag, everything you can think of, and all he said at the end of all that is, you don't want to be my friend anymore. I said, no, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I'm not friends with rats. I feel like every man should, if they want to live a certain way, they should be responsible for their actions. If you wanted to live this life and you got caught up in it, you got to take that ride. That's just part of being a man. So it's like not, nobody can say I'm making up anything. I told this stuff to Suge's face, everything I'm telling you guys. So, and he didn't react right. <laughs> For someone that, to let someone talk to him like that, they're not who they claim to be. And this is, like I said, in front of the whole club. So can't get around that. Once again, this is Jay Mix here. And I'd like to thank all my YouTube subs and viewers and all the forum members for checking out part one. Stay tuned because part two will be up shortly. Be sure to check out the link at the top of the video and support the Kickstarter project. I have more with Lloyd coming soon and I'll see everybody on the next upload. One love everybody. A J Mix exclusive. What up for shut up?